Okay. So there it is. Welcome to our 26th episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time for five minutes only from Massachusetts. My name is Hayden. And I'm Anton. And Hayden, it's a good thing it's five minutes only because I just got back from vacation and it's been a crazy swamped week. So you got five minutes, man. <laughs> I, I believe it. Welcome back from Colorado. It's good to have you uh, in the flesh in Massachusetts once again. Oh, thanks. Thanks. We'll actually have to try and get together soon. I mean, things are starting to open up here in the U.S. Um, Exciting stuff. I'm, I'm fully vaxxed, as are you. So yeah, uh, good things are coming. So uh, I, I won't tell you what the tip is just yet, but I do have something prepared for you. All right. Well, um, you only have five minutes, so I'm going to make you turn on the clock even before you tell me the tip. Agreed. But I'll stick around after. Ten minutes. There we go. So um, uh, you may be interested to know, Anton, that in your absence, we crossed a, an important threshold with um, our uh, YouTube playlist. So on the 8th of May, I'm going to make you turn on the clock, though, because yes. I'm only going to give you five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So on the 8th of May, we crossed the 10,000 cumulative view threshold for um, all the videos that we've assembled. I and love it. You've got a little Apex app to tell us how many videos we've, we've got. How, how many do we have today? Oh, great question. So today, we are close. We're nearing 11,000. Wow, 11,000 videos of just Apex Instant Tips. Just Apex Instant Tips. So just that playlist. Wow. And uh, I further have the ability to tell you that different videos um, uh, have different rates of um, progression. So I, we, I can see that uh, the why isn't my value in session state is uh, rising less quickly than, say, um, Vincent's tip about CSS variables. So, so while ours I'm, was sort of plateauing at 250, here's the, his is crossing the 300 mark. So I'm guessing that you're not um, typing all these this data in, right? You're you're calling a, a YouTube API? Yes, so so I'm uh, using PLSQL, I'm using Apex uh, RESTful services to reach out to the YouTube API and put them in my title. So if you're anything like me, somewhere in this application, there's a button that you click every day to go out and get the latest data because you've just been too lazy to use DBMS scheduler to schedule a job. Well, that wouldn't be much of a tip, but uh, <laughs> you're, you're hitting on what today's topic is about, which is Apex automations. So uh, th this whole thing was just a build up to talking about Apex automations. Uh, well, and actually I would say I recently did a deep dive on Apex automation. So I love the topic. Um, I, I've done scheduler stuff all the time, but I'm loving to hear about automations. Absolutely. So let's uh, give it a brief overview in the three minutes that we have or so. So uh, automation. But, but why did you choose uh, automations instead of uh, instead of DBM scheduler? Well, I, I'll admit, f firstly, because it was kind of buzzy, and I had access to an Apex twenty point two environment. So I, so I even had access to it, which was kind of new. Uh -huh. um, but it, it, my my motivations were less shallow than just that. Um, I, I, first and foremost, uh, it's just a. Uh, it, it cuts through some, some, some complexity. So in DBMS scheduler, you have a, you have to have access to DBMS scheduler. Um, the the user that, that DBMS scheduler is running as needs to have access to the database objects that you need that you're trying to uh, to edit with your job. With Apex automations, by contrast, um, you just need if you have access to the builder environment, you can do it all. Yeah, and actually, I'll, I'll have to say, uh, I'll add one more to that, and that's DBMS Scheduler has its own syntax, and I, I, even though I've done a lot with it, I look it up every single time. Uh, I will wholeheartedly agree with that, and let, let's uh, see that in action. So if I, um, so we can see some jobs that I've created, but if I create a new one, uh, so I'll call this one AIT, and then there are some options that we can quickly talk to in the two minutes that we have. So you can have it on demand or scheduled. Obviously the job that I created to fetch this every, uh, my YouTube stats every morning is a scheduled one. Uh, you can um, have it in a, uh, initiated on query or always. Um, this is a-, a I think we it, should stick, I think we should stick around after and talk about some of these, right? Let's say yeah. always, yeah. Always, yes, absolutely. And then um, uh, let, let's have it, uh, let's just create it from here. And uh, just uh, talking through some of this, so so you mentioned how it's it's friendlier. Um, if I wanted to edit the schedule expression, uh, this friendly utility makes it very easy. So that that is a huge advantage over DBMS schedule by my book. Yeah. 
And um, added to that, uh, in, in the next section, we can see that uh, I have this uh, um, section for actions. It's preceded with um, a default new action. Uh, and I can, of course, chain them um, just as I oh, might. So like scheduler, you have the ability to chain these actions. That's awesome. That's great. Okay. Yeah. And then here's here's something that it has over DBMS scheduler in the actions section. And I'll maybe make this my um, one of my final points. In this section, of course, you, you write in PL SQL, but you have access to the full, um, uh, you're in an Apex session. So, so without any extra lines of code, you can directly invoke Apex mail, um, Apex collections, what have you. And uh, that's something that, that you would uh, need to write more for to make it work in DBMS scheduling. Okay, I'll mention a couple other things. Um, first, it comes right along when you import your application, it's gonna start running. That's right, so th that is a, a word of warning, uh, but, um, but that word of warning actually uh, leads to a feature over DBMS scheduler, which is you can actually apply build options to your job. So, and you can have it turned on and off based on something in the, the application itself. That's right. It, it does mean that you have to be a little bit more intentional about this. Um, uh, when you, uh, uh, when you uh, deploy your environment, think about what jobs you have. Um, and I'm gonna, in the last five seconds, I'm going to tease for um, after our little break, I'm going to ask a question about why you used s automations instead of synchronizations of REST data services. Yes. So I'll... I'll save that. That was the tip. I love it. I think we absolutely hit it within our five minutes. And the tip is to use automations when you might consider scheduler because it, it seems to have a lot of advantages. And I think I, I really like this. That's right. I, I tried to stay focused on on the differences between scheduler and automations. It's not, I'm not talking about automations overall. It's just why you should use scheduler over automations. Uh, the other way around. Sorry. Automations over around, scheduler. Yes. <laughs> Automation is over scheduling. Um, well, I definitely have a few things to chat about. Um, and Michelle has some questions on it as well, I see. So, um, or Mishka. Uh, so let's, um, let's tell people that if you came in just for five minutes um, and you don't want to hear about all my other questions for Hayden on this topic um, or, or don't have your own questions, feel free to get out of here, send a letter to your mom about the show, um, smash that. the bell, all that stuff. Yeah, um, and so Hayden, uh, we've got some questions that have already um, come up. Why don't we do our normal, we'll do the wisdom of the week, let people think about additional questions, we'll hit the questions that came up, uh, and then we have the answer to last week's puzzler. Um, so, yes. um, and so uh, if you would um, bring up the wisdom of the week, this week's wisdom of the week is that um, it's best to decide on the finish line uh, before starting the race. Um, and, and I'll say, we actually did this in a recent project where we looked at a whole bunch of things and we just threw a bunch of stuff out and said, we're not going to, that's not going to be part of our first release. And as we were coming up on the, the finish line, people started saying, why don't we put those objects back in because we've got extra time. And we made the call, let's, let's get the build Let's make it work. Let's actually have a production release with what we said we were going to do. And it was the right call because if we had tried to squeeze those extra things in, it would have, it, it, well, maybe we would have made it, we, maybe we wouldn't have, but we finished the race and there's always an opportunity to run another race. And, and I, I love XKCD, but um, much like this uh, little shot shows, you can always do something bitter, bigger and better and grander um, but getting that first thing out working is always such a great relief. So, hundred uh, percent. Um, and that reminds me of why I'm such an advocate for uh, agile principles, um, uh, in which the definition of done is um, a key concept. Right, right, and and you do that before you start. Right. right. So, um, I, I, I really, I think it's an important thing to do. Um, so that's the that's my wisdom of the week for the week. Um, and uh, so here we go. This is our first question. Hey, I'll let you. Take this one. Uh, so th they won't uh, th they won't show up in um, in the same way as you might expect a, a DBMS scheduler job to show up. Uh, when the um, uh, there is an Apex Automations job that runs every two minutes, uh, that um, will uh, uh, check to see whether or not any of your Apex Automations are ready to run, and that is that is a DBMS scheduler job, and you, so you'll be able to find that one. Uh, and then uh, the uh, 
the execution of your Apex automation will show up in the DBMS scheduler logs, uh, the execution logs. So, so, it, so the Apex automation creates on the fly another yes. DBMS scheduler job. So you'll see that job running, but it's not a scheduled job in the sense that it, it's just a one-time run every time. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's not a direct scan on DBMS scheduler. It, uh, a Apex automations will run your job for you. Okay. Um, so this is a great one. If a scheduled uh, run failed, can we see the error history of runs? Yes. So um, uh, we didn't uh, focus on it when I was sharing my screen, but uh, in the same section where you create your jobs, um, there is an execution log um, that uh, you can consult. A additionally, you're encouraged to um, instrument your code just as you would anything else. And what I'll point out is it's extremely rare to see the the job that Apex Automations creates fail because that job, most of those errors will get handled by the engine and, and the, the it would just show up in in the your automation log. It wouldn't show up in the DBM scheduler log as a failed job. They will almost always succeed even if they fail, but they'll show up in your, your log. Um, I don't know. Did I, did, did I describe yeah, that well enough? Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> um, so, um, so we have, uh, can you give an example when scheduler is a better option than automations? So this is interesting. Well, one that occurs to me off the top of my head is, um, uh, so automations does require that you create your job in the context of a given application. Sometimes that doesn't make sense. Uh, sometimes a job um, at, applies more broadly than to a given application, or it has nothing to do with any application, in which case I think it might be confusing to associate it with an application. Yeah, that's interesting. Under that scenario, you might even, I mean, sometimes I have like a master application that, that I deploy that doesn't, nobody ever actually runs, that has error messages in it and that kind of thing, translations that nobody ever sees. Um, right. But yeah, I, I see your point. I mean, the other one that comes to mind is DB with scheduler if you don't use Apex, right? If your database doesn't have Apex, you don't have an Apex schema, or possibly if you have a, a schema that isn't associated with a workspace that you want it to be, you know, it's really sensitive or something like that. Um, but it's, it's hard for me at this point. I, I did a bit of a deep, deep dive not too long ago in automations and I think I'm gonna start using automations over a DBM scheduler job. So. Um, I agree with that. So, ah. Uh, yeah, so, so there's an entire Apex underscore automations uh, a, uh, utility that you can use that has that gives you full control over uh, uh, consulting its executions and um, uh, uh, making it run, editing it. So I, I, I have to say there, there are a lot of features in automations, and the, the, I think this tip is really like take a look at more what you can do there. There's so much that we. We, we didn't cover because in five minutes you can't, but the, the big tip is take a look, a deeper look, which makes me uh, wanna get to the question that I was asking earlier around um, why an automation in this case and not a REST data service synchronization. And I think I heard you say that you have three tables involved, which that could drive a little bit of this. That's right, and I, and I think there is an opportunity to refactor and that, that I think could yield more uh, tips that we'll um, share with our our community here. Uh, I think Neilish's question was actually um, apropos about sharing the um, my YouTube API invocation. Uh, so at, we, we've done a little bit of code review together, Anton, to discuss the YouTube call that I've um, uh, made. And, and I think that there is an opportunity to uh, refactor it uh, through some combination of automations and data synchronization to um, and uh, further streamline it. Right, so um, I think the, and, and the, the nice thing is if you have a, an existing package that does a whole bunch of things, you can simply just call it through an automation. Um, and, and I have to say, I've looked into synchronizations and data, rest, data services and super powerful, super declarative, but at some point you have to know a lot about the Apex engine itself, about, about all these different things, Data, REST data services, synchronizations, how you call the synchronization API if you're going to call it from something else, um, that uh, I'm not always convinced that maybe just a few lines of PL SQL code isn't sometimes a little easier to grasp. So Yeah, I, 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 I'm not displeased with what I have. 
But mm -hmm. if there's an opportunity to make what I have more declarative and exercise my knowledge of um, apex bells and whistles, I'm not against it. All right. And the other thing that um, you might consider uh, based on Hayden's is just posting your, your YouTube API um, out on GitHub or something, and we can put a, a link into it from here. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a very reasonable thing to do. So I'll, I'll, I'll do exactly that. Oh, great. Um, I, I really could, um, I could talk on the topic of automations for a long time, but, but when you, when you add in automations plus rest data services and, and synchronizations and all of these things, um, definitely way more than our five minutes allows. Um, so, um, and meanwhile, I am uh, chomping at the bit to find out the solution to your, to last week's puzzle. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And, um, you know, I don't have a slide budget and I don't know if you noticed throughout the talk, I was kind of looking around for even a piece of paper to give this, but I think I can find a box to just write on. And so we're going to, we're going to do that. Um, so I, I can, uh, while yeah. you're, you're, uh, writing down, I, I can describe what I remember the problem being great. Yes, please do. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, the starting premise was um, if you had uh, uh, nine dots in a, in a square, and, and I think uh, let's switch to this view so it's, um, you have more width. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay, very good. And yeah, so I'll, I'll let you take over, Anton. Uh, excellent. Um, and uh, so, yes, the idea is to be able to connect all nine dots using um, just th four line segments, never lifting your pencil. And I should have added in, you can't backtrack either. Um, I'll, I'll show my daughter came up with uh, another solution by backtracking, but I, I should have added that in. So the idea is um, four line segments and you can't lift your pencil to do that. So um, I'll just go ahead and show, show the answer. The answer, um, actually the first person to um, to come up with the answer as, that, that I know of was Joe Blasi. So Joe, congratulations to you. Mm -hmm. And his the way I know he got the answer, he didn't actually show it to me, but he said, think outside the box. And mm -hmm. so this is the solution right there. Think outside the box. That's four line segments. If you start at the this one and go, oh, I can't do it this way. But anyway, you get the idea. There is our solution four line segments. Okay. Very uh, clever. The, uh, Angel, uh, I think has the, the right idea as well. Um, uh, perhaps. So, um, th there we go. And Joe gave a little, uh, there you go. Your shout out, Joe. Um, great. Well, I think that covers the whole week's show. Don't forget to do all the things. Ring like, the bell. Right. Yeah. Um, send yeah. a letter to your mom. All that. And we'll be back uh, next Friday, as ever. Indeed we will. Yeah. Bye-bye.